Hey everyone, Mike here from ArnoldTutoring.com with a fairly tough identity question actually. We've got uh, a few different trig ratios involved and the structure doesn't really give anything away. So let's try and work through it and see if we can come up with some strategies. Um, so we have secant to the 6x minus tan to the 6x, which right there we don't see very often, equals 1 plus 3 tan squared secant squared. So squared trig ratios are usually ones we like to work with. Um, so that's good to know on the right side. But the left side, we're probably not going to be able to work our way towards the power of 6. So let's see if we can break this power of 6 down. Um, you might think, first of all, it's a difference of squares with powers of 3. But what's even better is if we remember our identity that 1 plus tan squared theta, or well, yeah, I'll write theta for now, equals secant squared theta. Right? This is just one of our basic Pythagoras identities. Um, which can be uh, rewritten as 1 equals secant squared theta minus tan squared theta. So if we can keep this one in mind, we know that we can probably break this out of uh, our left-hand side, which would just um, bring it down to a 1, so that would essentially cancel out some terms. So let's see if we can do that. So I'm going to try and kind of force, uh, I'm going to start with the left-hand side, so we should let our grader know that. Um, and I'm going to force that out of this left-hand side. So I'm going to force it out by basically saying secant squared x minus tan squared x because I know that's going to go to 1 and if you can either do this by long division out of this left hand side or sort of working backwards into it so I know I'm going to be left with secant to the power of 4x the middle term here will be minus tan squared x secant 4x so I need uh, plus tan squared x secant squared x and then I need minus tan 6x on the end, so I need a plus tan 4x. Tan to the power of 4x. So that's just the long division. Again, I, I'm essentially forcing my known identity into it so that I can uh, make this bracket we now know equals 1, so it can essentially go away because it's just multiplied to this bracket. Now, we've got three terms added together, and we know if we look at the right-hand side, we need to get to two terms added together. Um, what I'm going to do is kind of get rid of, or I'm going, I'm going to bring it, break it down into see, sines and coses. Secants and tans are a little bit more difficult to work with sometimes, um, and we can kind of use the right-hand side to come and meet us halfway eventually. So I'm, I'm just going to keep going on the left-hand side here. I know secant to the power of 4x is the same as 1 over cos to the power of 4x, plus tan squared x is sine squared x, over cos squared x times secant squared x, which is 1 over cos squared x, plus tan to the 4 is sine to the 4 over cos 4. Okay, so uh, we can see that when we multiply this middle term together, our, our denominator is going to be cos to the 4x, because cos squared x times cos squared x is cos to the 4x. So we've already got a common denominator here, which is nice. It's 1 plus sine squared x plus sine to the 4x all over cos 4x. Okay, so that's not too bad. Um, now, here is where I would take a look at the right-hand side really quick. So, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kind of write the right-hand side over here a little bit different. I'm going to break it down into sines and coses. So it's 1 plus 3 sine squared x over cos 4x. You should see that cos 4x is because tan squared x has cos squared x on the bottom and secant squared x has cos squared x on the bottom. So those multiply to give cos 4x. So that's really good to know. Um, what I'm going to focus on here is that um, I need a 3 sine squared x. So I need 3 different sine squared x terms eventually good to know. You can also think of this 1 hanging out here by itself. If you were to rewrite that over cos 4x, it would be cos 4x over cos 4x. So these are the kind of things, you don't necessarily have to write that down, but keep it off to the side as sort of a road map for where we're taking this left-hand side. I'm going to focus on that 3 sine squared x right here. Um, I've got 1 sine squared x right here so far. How do I get some more? This is a tricky, tricky piece, but I don't want this 1 
over the cos 4x. So what can we do with 1? Well, we know 1 equals sine squared x plus cos squared x. Right? That's our basic identity. That kills two birds with one stone. It gets rid of that 1 over the cos 4x, which I don't have when I look at my right-hand side. And it also brings in an extra sine squared x, knowing that I need three of those. Everything else is the same. Okay, so this whole time I'm kind of keeping an eye on the right side, um, both the structure and the trig functions that I need. Great, so if we were to simplify this, we've got 2 sine squared x right now, plus cos squared x, plus sine to the 4x, all over cos 4x. Great, I've got 2 sine squared x, I still need a third one. How can we get a sine squared x out of here, a positive one? Well, we know that sine to the 4x can be broken down into sine squared x times sine squared x. So let's do that. I don't want to change my cos squared x because I just got that from changing 1. Plus sine squared x times sine squared x. So all I've done is broken the sine to the 4x into sine squared x, sine squared x. Great. Um, now, we have sine squared x times sine squared x. Can't do much with that, so why don't we change one of them to 1 minus cos squared x. Perfect. I'm going to pause and rewrite that up here. So I've just rewritten that up top. And now we can keep going. Like I said, let's break one of those sine squared x into 1 minus cos squared x, because we really can't do anything else with it. Sine squared x plus cos squared x plus 1 minus sine cos squared x times sine squared x. Hopefully you can see where we're going here now. If we multiply that out, that bracket, we've got 2 sine squared x plus cos squared x plus sine squared x. Ah, there's our third sine squared x. Minus cos squared x sine squared x. A lot of coses and sines going on here, but it's almost done. So now I can combine these two terms because I've got my 3 sine squared x, which is what I wanted. So I've got 3 sine squared x plus the, last, the other two terms. We've got a cos squared x and a minus cos squared x sine squared x. So I can factor out a cos squared x from both of those. And I'm left with 1 minus sine squared x. Ah, that should jump out to us at this point, because we know 1 minus sine squared x is cos squared x. So this leaves us with 3 sine squared x plus cos squared x times cos squared x is cos to the 4x, all over cos to the 4x. Now we can break these up over their individual, uh, e each term over the denominator. So we've got 3 sine squared x over cos 4x plus cos 4x over cos 4x is 1 and there we go we have 1 plus sine squared x over cos 4, uh, 4x is 3 tan squared x secant squared x which equals the right hand side right so we may not want to actually like I said write this right hand side expansion as part of our question, you might want to do it off to the side on a test because you don't want to confuse the grader as to where you're going. But it gives you a, uh, a good idea of the structure that we want to get our left-hand side in. Again, I kind of targeted this 3 sine squared x because I had uh, 1 sine squared x hanging around and then 2 sine squared x and then I knew I needed a third. So it kind of tells you what to do with your um, cos squared x and, and, uh, and things like that. This is a very tough identity. Um, even off the start, knowing to break out secant squared x minus tan squared x is fairly tough, but whenever we see secants and tans in the same question, we kind of want to target that identity that we know. So hopefully this is helpful. If you have any more questions, feel free to email us, info at arnoldtutoring.com. Thanks.